Hi, and welcome to this entry in the AI and Games series. My name is Tommy Thompson, and today we're going to talk about ongoing research into the notion of general intelligence and how it's been explored in video games. Now, I'd best start by talking about what general intelligence is. It's one of these things that we humans often take for granted. General intelligence is to an extent what it says in the tin, an ability to function in an intelligent fashion regardless of the context. Humans are actually pretty good at this, since we not only adapt to different circumstances reasonably well, provided our emotional state doesn't get in the way, but also relate prior knowledge to new experiences. It's actually a skill that we use on a regular basis when we play video games. It may sound preposterous to some, but general intelligence is a critical part of how we learn to play a range of different video games. If you play video games on a regular basis, you wouldn't give it any thought, but a lot of foundational knowledge is exploited when you start playing new video games. So let's tell a little story to kind of frame my argument. This is Soap. Soap really enjoys first person shooters. He jumped on that whole Call of Duty bandwagon and that's all he's ever really played since. Then one day, Soap decides he wants to play a different game. He sees a different shooting game called Battlefield and decides he wants to try that game. Now when Soap starts playing Battlefield, he finds it remarkably familiar to his sweetheart, Call of Duty. However, the rules are different and the guns feel a bit different, so he starts to experiment so he can tailor his style to suit that game. In time, Soap becomes very good at playing Battlefield. It's a nice story, isn't it? Except we sort of ignored the fact that Soap started playing a completely different video game without needing to relearn how to control the character. It's another first-person shooter, and by and large, FPS games use the same control schemes with some minor changes here and there depending on the game mechanics. In addition, Soap was more focused on how these mechanics differed from Call of Duty. He compared his prior experiences to that found in this game, and can immediately use prior knowledge to help him play a game that he'd never played before in his life. Furthermore, as he becomes very good at playing Battlefield, it doesn't necessarily mean he becomes a better or worse player of Call of Duty. In time, he learns to differentiate the two, such that he can play them similarly, yet differently. Fleshlings, like you and I, do this on an almost daily occurrence, given this is equally applicable to all walks of life as it is to games. It's what often makes the first level of any first-person shooter so frustrating for so many, given that it's a scripted tutorial designed to introduce novices to the game, while seasoned players have to plod through the monotony to get to the action. However, by comparison, AI software is not very good at this. AI is often built to solve a particular problem, or a larger set of problems that exist within a domain of the world. As such, this is still one of the big challenges on the AI to-do list. Many of the examples of AI seen in science fiction can't function lest they exhibit some general intelligence. If not, the Terminator may well have just wandered aimlessly in Los Angeles stark naked, or maybe have done nothing at all, since it could not relate 1984 Los Angeles to his experiences from 2029. So. What are we doing to address this problem? General intelligence in video games is one of many issues that was discussed back in 2012 at a research retreat at Schloss Dagstuhl in Germany. In fact, I was part of the group that discussed the relevance of this topic. Um, general intelligence is not new to AI research, and in fact board games already have an established body of research in this area. However, video games were still lacking in this detail. Cut to 2014, and this idea has matured into the general video game AI competition, where researchers and hobbyists are encouraged to submit AI software that's capable of playing a range of different video games. The framework, developed largely by this lot, is reliant upon the video game description language developed by Tom Shaw. Once again, this is another idea that arose uh, from the Dagstuhl retreat. This is highly useful given that the, soft, the system can quickly replicate classic video games such as Frogger, Space Invaders and Missile Command by defining them in the language, then the GVG AI framework will build these games to suit. Now, it's expected that any AI software you write can not only play all 10 games that are provided within the framework, but also any game that is defined in the competition that are not revealed to players beforehand. When writing a given bot, Players are reliant upon two pieces of information, what the current state of the world looks like and how much time they have to make a decision. The information provided on what is happening in the state is fairly broad. However, what it all means in context is something you have to discover for yourself. There's an interesting task to consider when you look at the Space Invaders game in action. 
As humans, we can quickly associate how using the controls will affect the avatar and transform the world, as subsequently, you know, having an impact on the score. But when the state is raw observation data, how do we ensure an AI is able to make these correlations? It's a very interesting problem that hopefully continues to grow in the coming years. And that's it for this entry in the AI and Game series. If you're interested in creating your own GVG AI bot, then head on over to the link on screen now to download the source code and get started. As always, there's written works attached to this video for those who want to know more, which also details my explorations of the source and a little on my own time writing a bot for the competition. Thanks for watching and keep an eye out for more AI and Games videos. This video has been made thanks to the support of awesome people such as Dane Alexander over on Patreon.com. For more information on the work that I do and how you can support it, check out patreon.com forward slash AI and games. Don't forget the underscores though. They're pretty important.